Hello everyone, Harry Bulldog here, editor for Total Telecom. We're here on day one of Submarine Networks EMEA 2023. I'm delighted to be joined by Thomas Sorensen, the uh, VP of Global Submarine Solutions at Siena. Thomas, how's the uh, conference going for you so far? It's been very, very hectic. Uh, fantastic conference in terms of number of registered people. A lot of good discussions. I particularly enjoyed the first round table this morning. It was really, really good. A lot of good discussion. And the presentations in general have a very high professional format, I believe. So. Very good, and uh, a good and positive atmosphere as well in terms of looking at our industry going forward. So, yeah, very, very nice. Perfect, and, and definitely a very exciting time for the uh, the submarine cable industry in general. In terms of, I guess, what do you think of the, of the biggest challenges for the subsea industry right now? So there are a number of challenges obviously facing the industry right now. We can't help not talking about geopolitics which is a big, big issue, uh, both in Asia, in Indian Ocean, and certainly also in Europe. We're seeing more and more focus from uh, local authorities and, and governments on security of subsea cables as critical infrastructure. Uh, we're seeing cabotage legislation in some places in Asia. We have issues in the South China Sea. So there's lots of issues on the geopolitics side. At the same time, there's an ever-increasing demand uh, for more capacity in the systems. We're getting closer to the Shannon limit, which means that we need to do more to the dry plant now, which again means we're talking more fiber pairs. We're talking new technologies on the fiber side multi-core fiber, potentially hollow-core fiber. So lots of challenges ahead of us, but they are all positive challenges in the sense that it's about the world needing more of what we do, which is great. Uh, and then we have the geopolitical situation that we can't really do much about, but we have to live with and, and work with, really, and work with the authorities and work with the other seabed users. And in terms of those, those technologies, what do you consider to be the kind of most exciting technologies uh, that are really having a big impact? So right now MCF is exciting, multi-core fiber, and we are seeing the first cable being deployed with that technology. However, that technology in itself is probably not the next revolution, technological revolution that we really need to take the industry forward. That might be hollow core fiber, too early to tell, but that could be an interesting one. On the terminal side or SLT side, we now have a three nanometer CMOS in the recent uh, generation of SLTEs, and that's really interesting in the sense that that gives us more spectral efficiency, it decreases um, the space and the power requirements at the SLTEs, which again is good for our sustainability objectives, right? And, and one of the things that, that the world really, in, and in general, has been dealing with recently has been uh, supply chain crises. We've seen it in, in uh, microchips, and phones, all sorts of different things. How far has Siena been impacted by that, and what, what kind of steps have you taken to, to mit mitigate those impacts? So we, we have been quite heavily uh, impacted uh, overall, and this was not really the, all of the expensive components. It was more the cheap components that we, there was a scarcity of with all the interruptions in the supply chain globally, right? Um, and, and this was affecting all industries really so what we have done is we have qualified new products to replace those that were hard to get and, and we've really looked at all of our designs in pretty much every piece of equipment that we have to find alternative vendors find alternative products that we could use uh, in the overall product line that we have. It has now really come down, uh, our, our lead times have come down, it has really contracted, which is great. Not quite where we were before COVID, but it's, it's much, much better. It's a bit of a, a wave effect where the first wave was really bad, and now every time we see the top, it's coming down, coming down. And that's globally that things are, are beginning to stabilize, because it has obviously shaken all of the supply chains in all of the industries, and we are now seeing things beginning to stabilize, and certainly coming down, uh, which is great. Yeah, very encouraging. I, I think I'm sure the whole industry is very, uh, very happy about that. In terms of being here at uh, Subnet's EMEA 2023, we've got so many different people from all the different aspects. We've got the regulatory people, we've got, we've got uh, the, the vendor side, we've got some of the cable operators. What kind of discussions are you most excited to be having at, uh, at an event like this? For me, it's still our customers. So the operators and the hyperscalers, those that use our technology, it's also interesting as, as a person who has been in the industry for 23 years to see the governments, the legislators being here and having those discussions. But the ones that are close to my heart is obviously those with our customers and those who use our equipment. Thomas, thank you so much for your time today. It's always really great to talk to you. Thank you very much.